Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my Java algorithms tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about all of the elementary sorting algorithms. We're going to take a look at two different search algorithms, and we're going to talk about a whole ton of different things. And in this tutorial, I'm going to try to make everything much more interactive because I wrote a method that's going to make it very easy for us not to just see what the algorithms are, but completely understand how they work. All of the arrays we're going to be working with are going to be displayed in a horizontal format like this and then on top of that you're going to be able to see the indexes and how they move as they process information using the algorithms so we have a lot to do so let's get into it okay so there's a link underneath the video to all of this stuff and if you really really want to learn it you should get it and then run it as I am running it like this and flip back and forth between the video or at least that's my idea so that you can completely understand this stuff and there's a link in the upper right hand corner to a playlist for all of my algorithm tutorials well where I left you off last time we are using the linear search and I'm going to show you exactly how it works now we have our indexes and there's going to be 10 of them 0 through 9 and the way the linear search is going to work for us is I am going to pass in a value, and here's all the different algorithms we're going to be creating, as you can see. And I'm going to pass into the linear search function a11 and say I want to find it. Here we are back up in the linear search method, and we are going to watch it execute. Now, this is a very simple one. All we're going to do is start out at the zero index, and we're going to continue to increase in value until we get to the end of the array. And we are just simply going to go to the zero index and say, is 17 equal to 11 if it is we are going to add it to indexes with value obviously it isn't but index 2 has 11 in it that's going to be added to indexes with value and 11 is nowhere else to be found and as you can see it's going to go to the zero index the one this guy is representative of the value for i over here going to jump into two jump into three and you can see it is just simply searching for all those values and storing all of them in a minute you're going to see the binary search and you're going to see how it differs from the linear search and then you can see at the end it prints out the final place or the location for the number 11 in our sample array that we have here so now let's take a look at our bubble sort now the bubble sort will sort everything from smallest to largest or very easily by changing one little tiny piece of code it's going to sort largest to smallest and basically what's going to happen is we're going to create a for loop and you're going to see lots of these guys and we're going to say array size minus one and the reason why we're doing that is because array size is equal to 10 and we only have nine indexes and this i is going to start at the end of our array and as it is decremented all the indexes greater than it are going to be sorted and we're going to continue to do this as long as i is greater than one and we are going to decrement it so i is going to start over here in the nine index and then move towards zero and we're going to use another variable to start from the beginning and what it's going to do is compare each value next to each other and if the value is greater it's just simply going to swap them so then we're going to go int j is equal to zero and whenever i execute it over on the right side of the screen you're going to see exactly what's going on it's very simple and then we're just going to say if the array for the value of j before we put a semicolon there is greater than the array for j plus one then we are going to swap those values so we got to pass in j and j plus one and we're going to create this method here in a second and then i'm going to use my new little teaching tool print horizontal array and we're going to pass into it both the values for i and j so you can watch both those indexes moving around well, that means we have to actually create this guy right here swap values very easy and all it's going to do is swap the values so we're going to throw that in there and i'm just going to say public void swap values and then inside of this we're going to go int index one and int index two right like that and then if we want to swap them we're just going to create a temporary variable and have it store the index one array value inside of it now that we have that stored we can go and assign whatever the value stored in index 2 for that same array in there and then we can go and take index 2 and store inside of there the value for temp and there we are we're done that's how hard the bubble sort is now let's execute it and watch it go so i got to come down here and right here i am just going to go dot bubble sort 
and it's going to print everything out on the screen. Execute. And you can see precisely what is going on. So let's come back up to bubble sort so we can compare the two. And actually, I'm going to throw another print horizontal array inside of this area. And whenever we execute, you're going to see right here that the value for i is going to be equal to 9, just like it should be. The value for j is going to be equal to 0. Then what it's going to do is it's going to compare 12 to 19. And it's going to see that, yes, indeed, 12 is less than 19. So we don't need to change anything. Then it's going to compare 11 to 19 and see that yes indeed we're going to need to change them and you can see that yes indeed it did and it's going to slowly work its way up to compare 19 to 17 and then switch that and continue again compare 19 to 12 and then switch that compare 19 to 19 know that it doesn't need to do anything not worry about it then compare 19 to 14 and as you can see it changed that and then as it proceeds, it eventually is going to come back and switch this 14 to 19, but it's not going to do it right now. It's going to instead compare the 19 to the 10 and move the 10 over. After it gets the whole way up to the point where J is equal to 8 and I is equal to 9, it is going to move 9 downwards because it knows that this value right here is as great of a value as anything in the entire index, which as you can see, 19 is the biggest. And then it's gonna repeat from the bottom. It's going to compare 11 to 12, da 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 da. And then once it gets to this point, 17, 12, it's gonna switch to 17, and it's just gonna to continue to do that until it gets back up to the eight right there. And then it's gonna make the maximum index seven. And it just continues to repeat that process over and over and over again until the very, very last area where we have all of our digits in ascending order. So how hard is it to change it so that we have these in descending order? Very simple. Just come in here where this is greater than, change it to less than, file save, execute. And if we scroll down, you're going to see everything is in descending order. So there you go. That is the bubble sort. And I think that makes it very understandable whenever you see everything on the right hand side of the screen. And if you haven't quite got it all, we'll just run the program yourself. Of course, it's free. All the code is available underneath the video. So now that we have everything sorted, or actually we're going to have to change this to greater than because we need this for ascending. Now I'm going to show you how the binary search works. And let's double check. Yep, there, I got everything in order. Now, the binary search is actually quicker than the linear search because all the values are sorted. And because everything is sorted, once you get to a number that is larger than what you're searching for, you know you can stop the search. So that's why it is much faster. However, the binary search does not work so well when there are duplicate numbers because it's only going to find the first match. And of course, everything needs to be put in ascending order using a sorting algorithm. Now to find this, basically we're going to go for the old trick of guessing for a number between, say, 1 and 100. A smart person, if they could then ask for if their guess was higher or lower. So for example, if somebody said guess my number between 1 and 100 and you said 50 and then they say lower, then you can automatically cut out from your search 51 up to 100. Now your next guess is going to be something like 25 and then you can see that it cuts down dramatically on the number of numbers you need to search. But to do this, we're going to have to have a low index value, which is going to be the minimum search area or search number that we're going to be looking for. And we're also going to have to have a maximum or a high index. And it is just going to be whatever the maximum number is. And here we're going to have ray size minus one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go while low index is less than high index because we could never have our low index be larger or even equal to our high index if the number we're searching for is inside of here. And then we're going to make our big educated guess, which is going to be the middle index. And we're going to find the middle index by taking the high index plus the low index and then dividing those by 2, which, like I said before, if it's 1 and 100, then that would be 50. Then what we're going to do is just go if the array, and then we're going to put middle index inside of here, is less than value that we're going to be searching for. Well, that means that our low index is going to be equal to our middle index plus 1. And or else if the array, and again, this is going to be middle index, is greater than the value, then we know we have to change our high index and make it equal to middle index minus 1. And it's going to dramatically decrease the search area that we're going to be working with. And if neither of those are true, that means we matched our index. We found our number. 
You're going to see we're going to find our number very quickly. And in that situation, I'm going to go system out, print line. And let's say I want to do a new line and then go found a match for value at index. And then it will be middle index right like that. And that'll print out on the screen and it will have no reason to continue processing that information. So to skip out of the while loop, we just need to make the low index less than or equal to the high index. And I'm just going to go low index is equal to high index plus one. And that'll throw us out of there. And then to print out all this information on the screen so we can see what's going on, I'm going to go print horizontal array. And then I'm going to pass middle index into it. And then negative one is going to be whenever I want to ignore that index. That's just the way that this program works. And then I need to actually come down here and call this guy, but we need the bubble sort, remember? So I'm going to have to go new array dot binary search for value, and then let's just search for 11 again, just for the heck of it. And let's execute it. And as you can see, it's going to find everything very, very quickly. This part up here is the bubble sort, sorting everything. And as you can see, everything's in order. And the very first guess, if we take 0 plus 9 and divide it by 2, is going to give us 4. Remember, we're looking for 11. And that comes with the 4 index. And it says, is 13 equal to 11? The answer to that is no. Okay, fine. That means we can totally eliminate the rest of this array. And now we have to find a new midpoint. So that means our new high index is going to be equal to 3. And if we take 3 plus 0, that's going to come out with 3. Divided by 2 is going to be equal to 1. So now we're going to search in the 1 index to see if we find 11. And the answer to that is no. So we raise our low index to 1. And we add 1 plus 3 like that. Divided by 2, which is 2. And we can see here that we have a value or a match for the second index when we are searching for the number 11. And that is how a binary search works. So let's take another look at sorting. So we're going to look at the selection sort. Now the selection sort is actually going to save a number in a minimum spot as it finds it and then repeat searching through the entire array each time to slowly put the whole entire array in order. So again, we're going to have to do another for loop. I'm going to say x is equal to 0, and then we're going to continue cycling through this as long as x is less than array size. Same sort of thing over and over again. And then we are going to increment x. We are going to create a minimum value and have that set to whatever x is. And then we're going to have another for loop. And it's going to be int, and we're going to have y be equal to x. And we're going to continue cycling as long as y is less than array size. And then we are going to increment y. Same sort of thing, just a little bit different. Now what we can do is say if the array minimum is greater than the array value that is stored in the index represented by y. Well, we now know that we have a new minimum index, and it's going to be whatever the y index value is. Pretty simple. Then what we need to do is just swap our values, and that's going to be x and minimum are going to get passed in there. And if I want to print everything out, again, we're only going to be using really x here. So I'm just going to put negative 1 inside of there, and we'll be able to track that index again. All we need to do is come down here into main and go selection sort. And we can actually X out bubble sort, don't need that, and instead put selection sort inside of here and execute. And as you can see, when we look down here, everything is sorted perfectly. And if we come up here, we're going to see that our minimum value is going to be set for 10 after searching through the entire array. So now we know we can move our marker over to this point. And whenever we search through the entire array looking for the next smallest number after 10, we see that we have a match for 11. Okay, great. We know that's in the right place. Now let's find the next number that's going to go in index 2. If we look at all these, well, we know it's going to be 13. And as you can see, 13 was moved into place. Then the next is going to be 13 again, and you can see 13's there. Then after that, 14, and you can see 14's there. And that goes on and on and on and on and on, searching and moving up that marker place until we have everything sorted in the right order. And once again, to change this to make everything go in descending, just change that right there. File Save Execute, and now everything is in descending order. So that is how simple the selection sort is. Now let's go into the final elementary sort, which is called the insertion sort, and it's a little bit more complicated.
First, what I want to do is come down here, get rid of that guy, and come up here. Now, the insertion sort is normally the best of all the elementary sorts. However, unlike the other sorts, like you've seen here so far, at any one point in time, there is going to be a group or a part of the array that is sorted. With the insertion sort, that's not going to be true, or at least not definitely going to be true, as you're going to see here in a second. So... What it's going to do is basically search through the array, find a minimum, and then put it precisely into place, skipping multiple different indexes. For the most part, what we've been doing here is just swapping indexes that are next to each other. The insertion sort doesn't work that way. So we're just going to do another for loop, and this is going to be array size again, and we're going to increment it, of course. Then we're going to set the value for J equal to I. And then this is going to be the value that we plan to insert somewhere else in the array. And its value is going to be the array to start with right there. Then we're going to create ourselves a while loop. And this first part is just to make sure that J never has a value that is less than zero. So we don't really need to focus on that whenever we're analyzing exactly what's going on. And then we're going to have j minus 1, which is actually going to be the 0 index. Whenever we first start off, j has a value of 1, remember, right here, j, 1. So this is what we're going to use whenever we want the 0 index. And we're going to say, is it greater than 2 insert, which is going to be a value that we plan to insert there if it isn't the minimum number already. And then we're going to go the array j is going to be equal to the array j minus 1. And we can do that because we have the value for j already saved into insert. And if you're getting it all confused, you won't be once I start running through this on the right side of the screen. And then what I'm going to do is just print horizontal array, pass into it the values for i and j. And then down here, we're going to put inside of the array the value that is stored inside of to insert. And I want to print that on, on the screen as well. And then this time, because this is a little bit more confusing, I'm going to print a ton of information out on the screen so that we can watch everything go down here. We're going to go print line, and I'm going to throw a new line in here, and I'm going to say array i is equal to, and I'm going to actually print that out. Let's move this over. And that value is going to be the array i. So we'll be able to see that on the screen. Help us keep everything straight. Let's move this down here. And then I'm going to say array j is equal to, put that in there and go the array j, print that out on the screen. And then I'm also going to print out to the screen whatever the value is for to insert. We'll be able to see exactly what's going on here. Got that all set up. So now I just need to go down in main and do insertion sort. Da 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 da. New array and insertion sort is the only option for that. Put that there. And if I typed everything, let's execute it. Looks like everything worked out. Let's come down inside of here. And we can see everything is in ascending order, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. Now let's come up the insertion sort and let's actually watch what it does. So basically these two values are one and one, which we know are true because that's exactly what's going on there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check, okay, is 12 less than 19? No, that's not true. Now is 19 greater than 11? Yes, it is. So what we're going to do is store this value, 11, into sort, and then we're going to take 19 and paste that value right there so that 19 is now in the right place. And then we're going to take the 12, because remember 11 is what we need to move in here. We're going to copy 12 to this place right here. And then finally, we're going to take the 11 and put it in the position where it needs to be. Now we have three numbers right in order here pretty quickly. Then we need to go through and check whether 19 deserves to be there or whether 11 should move down. We're going to store the value of 11 inside of there. Put the value of 19 right there. Go do the same thing with 12 by copying it right there, and then putting our other 11 right there. And you can see we're more quickly getting everything in order. However, we don't have large groups. For example, 10 still here, where with the other sorts, it would have been up here much quicker. You can see that we're slowly putting everything in order. And that process is just going to continue onwards and onwards and onwards until we get down here and we have everything in proper order. So there are a whole bunch or all of the elementary ways of sorting in regards to Java algorithms as well as two different ways to search and a brand new tool for us to analyze all of our data structures. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.